This podcast is for entertainment purposes only and does not substitute for professional medical advice. Please seek a medical professional or healthcare provider if you're seeking any medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Thanks, everyone. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Weekly. So we're back. We are back. On another episode. What are we talking about today, Jules? We are continuing this little series that we have ongoing, which was Evie's idea, and it's a lot of fun. Debunking. This is debunking part two. Yes. So debunking medical myths. So these are like the little tiny things that people say and you're like, yeah. is that real? Is it does real? That, does that really work? Is it an old wise tale? Is exactly. it not? Like, what is it? So you know? this is our part two. We already had our part one. So this Check is that. our second one. Yeah. Yeah. And I kind of try to keep it like in themes. Um, yes. So you're going to see what this theme is about. Okay. Let's start with the first one. Yes. So getting sick after getting rained on. This is huge yeah. at least for our hispanic world, oh my god it's like yeah, yeah. if you get rained on that's it like you're gonna get sick you're gonna get an, an pneumonia yep. yep okay so the myth we've all heard it don't go out in the rain or you'll catch a cold so this myth has been passed down through generations but let's dive a little bit into the science to see what's really going on yeah so first things first getting wet from the rain does not directly cause you to get sick okay debunked yeah (laughs) debunked okay illnesses like a common cold and flu are usually caused by viruses not by getting wet so according to medical experts the real culprits are viruses and bacteria that spread through the air in close contact with the infected individual the reason why the myth persists is because one when you get rained on or when you get wet you have a lowered body temperature then that will make you more susceptible okay the other thing that can make you more susceptible is close quarters during cold and rainy weather people tend to stay indoors more often often in close proximity to others so that it makes it a lot easier for viruses to spread when there's close contact with everyone so with combination of lowered body temperature and close quarters you can potentially get sick easier these are just expert opinions. So Dr. Mahisa Parandipva from Indonesia, doctors, Indonesian Doctors Association, explains that while rain itself doesn't make you sick, it can elevate bacteria and viruses from the ground into the air, increasing your exposure to them. So similarly, the Mayo Clinic states that wet hair or being wet in general can make you sick. It's, it's not that it will make you sick. It's the exposure to viruses that does. So how to stay healthy? tips to get to not get sick during rainy season is stay warm wear layers not in miami (laughs) yeah Miami. and then you also use the umbrella to keep you dry and maintain your body temperature also practice good hand hygiene Mm -hmm. so wash your hands frequently stop touching your face Mm -hmm. and also boost your immune system so eat a very good diet sleep enough exercise to keep your immune system strong conclusion Next time you tell someone you'll get sick from getting rained on, it's... Uh, nope. That is a myth. Wrong. And we have debunked it. Okay? Wrong. Debunked. Caso cerrado. Next one. I need to get like a little... Like, a little mallet. Yeah, a little mallet or javel or yeah. something. <laughs> something to like... Anyway. All right. So next myth. Getting a cold with a drop of temperature. So at least me with my mom, it's like, that's it. It keeps on getting hot and cold, hot and cold, hot and cold. This whole changing of the temperature too often, yes. that's what's making us sick. The schools keep the temperature so cold. And, and then the you go outside yeah. and it's hot and the in and out. And I'm like, okay, that's okay. Well, anyway, so let's get into that myth. Right. So debunking this myth because we're debunking it. Yeah. Many people believe that when the temperature drops, you're more likely to catch a cold. This is a, an idea that has been passed with well-meaning advice, like don't go outside with your wet hair or you'll catch a cold. But is there really any truth to that? The reality, common cold is caused, like she had said in the previous myth, viruses, not by cold weather. 
The most common culprits are rhinoviruses, which are responsible for up to 50% of colds. These viruses enter your body through your mouth, your ears, your nose, and often spread by droplets in the air when someone coughs or sneezes, yeah. or by touching contaminated surfaces and then touching your face. Why do colds seem more common in the winter then? Well, while cold weather itself doesn't cause colds, it does create conditions that make it easier for the viruses to spread. So a few reasons of why colds are more common in the winter. Indoor crowding, as she had mentioned for the previous one. When it's cold outside, people like to stay indoors. Then that close proximity, very reminiscent of the COVID days, you know, yes. of stay away from people. Six feet apart. You know, only a certain amount of people in places at a certain amount of time, etc. That's where, you know, all of this. So dry air. Winter air is typically drier, both indoors and outdoors. This dry air can dry out mucous membranes in your nose, making it easier for viruses to take a hold and to take hold and cause an infection, which is, you know, we're spoiled down here in Miami. Spoiled or eh, it depends. Spoiled in the winter, really, mm -hmm. because yeah. uh, right now it's it's murder. I remember when we lived in San Antonio and in New York. In New York, it was the first time that I realized that in the winter, I was, it was just dry. Yeah. Like, oh my God. My like, face was dry. Yes. Everything my was nose, dry. I would nose, get yeah. nose bleeds because yeah. of it. I was just like, man, I've never experienced this before. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's real. Anyway, mm -hmm. so weakened immune response. Cold weather can cause vasoconstriction, which is the narrowing of your blood vessels. This can reduce the circulation of immune cells in the respiratory system, potentially making it slightly easier for a virus to establish infection. And we could easily say that that one is debunked. Yes, debunked. Cold weather does not cause... Your mom's going to have a field day with that one. Oh, yeah. She's still not going to believe it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Myth. Going outside with wet hair will make you sick. So simply stepping outside with wet hair is not going to make you get a cold. Okay. So cold, again, what are they caused by? Viruses. Viruses. Let's yes. all say it together. Viruses. Viruses. <laughs> if I had a dollar for every single time that I told a parent it's a virus. Oh, my God. Yeah, and I'm sure that they I just like... I would be a multimillionaire. Yeah, and then they want antibiotics. And you're yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's not... That's a whole entire fight. Yeah. It's not gonna... All right, another myth that we're gonna jump into. Vitamin C prevents colds, okay? So, while vitamin C is important for overall health, there's no robust evidence that taking a high dose will prevent colds, okay? Yeah. It might help reduce the duration of a cold slightly, but it's not a magical Yeah, wand. pure all, yeah. all that, yeah. However... Like Julie and I have discussed in the past, it has a pretty good safety profile. Exactly. Okay, so take some vitamin C. It may or may not help. But at the end of the day, you don't want to take it? Fine. I don't yeah. think it's going to make a crazy difference either. Right. But maybe it will. Who knows? Okay, so this is a good one. Oh, man. This I, is yeah, as a I, physician. This I one like itches at I was me. literally going to say that. All doctors have a field day with this one. I hate it. So the yeah. flu shot causes the flu. Mm. My mom swore that that was true. No, no, no. I have forever. parents yeah. that will take it to their grave. Yeah. 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 So. They refuse to like, you know. The science behind the flu shot. Let's just start by the by the actual science in the flu shot. Yeah. First things first. Let's talk about what the flu shot is. Right. Okay. The flu vaccine is made from an inactivated, killed, okay, virus, or in some cases, just a single gene from the flu virus. This means that the virus in the shot, okay, is dead, all right? It cannot infect you. We are not injecting influenza into you, like yeah. a live influenza. So why do people think that the flu shot causes the flu? Timing is everything. Yeah. So it takes about two weeks for the flu vaccine to even start working. If you get sick right after getting the shot, it's likely that you were already exposed to flu or another virus before even getting vaccinated. And yes, you know what? People are going to be like, what are the chances? Actually, there's a lot of chances. There's a lot of chances. Especially in flu season. I mean, it's everywhere. Not only that, but can you really say that you didn't touch your face? Of course. Of course. That, or you didn't wash your or you wash your hands appropriately. Or that All elevator ride. Yeah. Simple shit like it's that. Like, it, when you went to the grocery store, somebody just sneezed like yes. nearby you or something. The other important, so yeah. The other important thing is the side effects. Okay. So and that could be confusing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So 
some people experience mild side effects like soreness at the injection site, a low-grade fever, achiness. But these are just signs that your immune system is working. It doesn't mean that you have the flu, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Other illnesses. During the flu season, I mean, yeah. every virus is yeah. having a party. Everybody is. Everyone is having a yeah. party, okay? Yeah, yeah. There's literally people that have four different viruses all at the same time, Yeah. okay? So you might think that the flu shot got you sick, but it's most likely another virus. The nasal spray exception. I'm happy that Jules mentioned this because the nasal spray is different from the actual injection. And yes, there is a nasal spray flu vaccine. Okay. I, you know, I didn't even know about it. Yes, there until is. Until I yes. did this. So now there is a spray version of the flu vaccine that contains live weakened viruses. So even though these viruses are alive, they've been weakened so much that they can't cause the flu. They can only replicate the cooler temperatures of your nose and not in the warmer parts of your body, like mm -hmm. your lungs, okay? So the bottom line is that the flu shot is your best defense against the flu. Now, there are different strains. So mm -hmm. how it works is that we actually go to the seasons, like the past season. So this 2024 flu shot, we took the information from the 2023 year. And then we create a vaccine to try to protect against the most common strain of that flu. Because a lot of people are going to say, oh, but you know, it wasn't that great at protection. Every year it's different. Every year it's different. Exactly. So the flu shot is your best defense against the flu. It can't give you the flu, but it can help you protect from getting seriously ill. So get vaccinated. Get, get right? vaccinated, guys. Yeah. Science is your friend and so is the flu shot. So stay healthy and keep those myths busted. busted. All right. We did that one good. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. All right. So next myth. Very, very popular yeah. for us Cubans down here and maybe other Hispanic cultures, but I'm speaking in our, yeah. in our experience. Uh, pneumonia after cleaning with Clorox. Tell me that you don't have abuelita telling you, no, 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 sal de aquí que limpie con cloro y te vas a enfermar. And I'm like, how about you? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Then that means that you're going to get the, you're the one doing it. Yeah. yeah. It's just, just so many things, so many things to this obvious myth that we're <laughs> going to bust right now real hard. But anyway, all right. So pneumonia is an infection that inflames the air sacs in one or both of your lungs, which can fill up with fluid or pus. It can be caused by various germs, including bacteria, viruses, and even fungi. So common symptoms include cough with mucus, fever, chills, and difficulty breathing. So the myth. Some people believe that using Clorox or bleach, but I'm just going to say Clorox because, I mean, that's just yeah. common. A popular bleach product for... <laughs> we just found a no thumbs up, people. Yeah, for those of you that are just listening. <laughs> we should give him a name. Yeah. We should give him a name. It looks uh, like the Mickey hand. I would call him Mickey. Okay, Mickey. All right. So Mickey just made an appearance. Yeah. Anyway, so... Mickey says hi, everyone. <laughs> for those of you that don't know... Every single time that Julie and I record, we're we're actually like video recording as well. Yeah. And some for some reason, Julie's computer yeah. gives us a thumbs up randomly. And Random. we still haven't figured out how to get it to do it again. I know it's like a FaceTime thing, but like I, I just I haven't been able to figure it out. So if yeah. one of you guys knows how I could take that off. Yeah. Great. If Sometimes not, we get balloons, too. Yeah. Or the fireworks. Or the fireworks. Remember the too? fireworks? Yeah. No idea. We haven't been able to replicate that one. Yeah, yeah that but one happened once. Now you'll know that's Mickey. Okay, so we'll say Mickey says hi. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Anyway, so for, you know, this Clorox bleach products that are used for cleaning, the myth says that it can also cause pneumonia. So the myth likely stems from misunderstandings about pneumonia and how it develops and affects, you know, it's affects Probably with bleach. Probably the symptoms, and, too. Exactly. We're going to go into that. So the science, pneumonia causes, the real actual pneumonia causes. So pneumonia, 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 pneumonia. <laughs> so pneumonia is primarily caused by infectious agents, like I had said, bacteria, for example, streptoc streptococcus, 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 pneumonia, mm -hmm. pneumonia. Anyway, viruses like influenza and fungi, 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 fungi. like fungi. nuclei. Yeah, yeah, I think that's why I say it like that. <laughs> anyway, so it's not caused by inhaling cleaning products such as bleach. So bleach and the respiratory irritation. While bleach can irritate your respiratory system, 
If inhaled in large amounts, it does not cause pneumonia. Inhaling bleach fumes can lead to symptoms like coughing, sore throat, and shortness of breath, but these are not the same as pneumonia. So proper use of bleach. When used correctly, bleach is a safe and effective disinfectant. The key is to use it in well-ventilated areas and avoid mixing it with other chemicals, which can cause and produce harmful gases. Yes. So case studies. There are rare cases where exposure to high concentrations of bleach has led to severe respiratory issues, but these are not typical and usually involve improper use or accidental ingestion. These cases do not equate to the infectious process of pneumonia because you're missing the infectious agent. Yes, exactly. The actual thing that causes the infection. Yeah, it's not in bleach. Bleach will kill it. (laughs) So anyway, practical tips in cleaning and using bleach. So ventilation, key. Always use bleach in a very well-ventilated area to minimize the inhalation of its fumes. Follow instructions. Read and follow the label instructions carefully and ensure the safe use. And of course, avoid mixing. I know it's tempting, but avoid mixing. Use one thing at a time. Never mix bleach with other cleaning products, especially those containing ammonia or acids, as this will definitely create toxic gases and you may faint and many other things. So in summary, while bleach can cause respiratory irritation if not used properly, it does not cause pneumonia. Pneumonia is an infection, so it needs an infectious agent uh, caused by germs, not by cleaning products. Cleaning products are what you use to get rid of those germs. Yes. So. Yes. And also like. Makes sense of that. Yeah. And you can have an irritation. Yeah. Um, You can have a pneumonitis. So it's inflammation, not, you know, a pneumonia, like an actual infection of your lung tissue. And all of that you you can. Like if you inhale like a a big amount. Yeah. Yeah. Probably not going to happen unless you're like literally dumping bleach all over one room and there's no ventilation, there's no air, and you have all the doors locked and there's no windows. Okay. (laughs) And you're doing that for hours on end. Yeah. You're probably like breathing in fumes. Exactly. I mean, you might, you might feel a little dizzy. Right. You know, definitely not recommended. It's kind of funny because when I, so my first, first job in college, was it my first job in college? No, I had plenty of jobs, but like my, I feel like my official job in college was working at the stock room. Yeah. Do you remember that? Oh yeah. (laughs) So I used to work at the chemistry stock room, right? And we used to have to make all the reagents Mm -hmm. and all the experiments for everyone taking that class. And they always had me mixing, like, all the crazy acids and bases, right? You had to do it in, like, the... And I had to do it under the hood. Yeah, yeah. But sometimes your girl was a little bit lazy. Dude, working inside a hood was, like, inside a hood, like, with your goggles. And, yes, I want to say, like, 99.9% of the time I was, like, doing that. But sometimes if I had to pour it into... And mind you, like, those Erlenmeyer flasks were... Yeah. massive because we had to make massive batches yeah. of them so i would just be pouring in like hypochlorous acid i would be like i don't even know like ammonia i was like mixing yeah, yeah. ammonia and stuff and then oh sometimes God. i would drop like too much and it was just the fume would sometimes burn my eyes yeah and then yeah. i don't so now that i'm like thinking about this i'm like my god like how did i never get it i know a, like a pneumonitis like i don't like an irritation from that yeah I don't know, but I, I get it. Sometimes I clean with straight bleach and then I, well, no, no, no. And then I remind myself because my, you know, to open up something or whatever, yeah. because my eyes and start burning. burning. I'm like, yeah. I'm pulling my mom right now. Like, yeah. can I not do that? Yeah. So yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's like a big warning, like ventilate. Yes. <laughs> anyway. So keep your cleaning products and routine safe, yeah. ventilate, but it does not cause pneumonia. Exactly. Busted. <laughs> Boasted. Next. All right. So feed a cold, starve a fever. So the old saying, feed a cold, star- starve a fever, has been around for centuries. Mm-hmm. But modern medical science has debunked the myth. Okay. So let's explain why this advice is outdated and what you should actually do when you have a cold and a fever. Okay. So when you're sick, whether with a cold or a fever, your body needs proper nutrition and hydration to support your immune system as it fights off the illness. And this could be really hard because when you're sick, you don't want to eat. Yeah. Okay. Your body's like, "Mm, no, you know, but you should give it at least some proper nutrition. Some chicken soup. Yes, exactly. 
or lots of fluid. So that's okay. why we recommend that. It's a lot of like liquid and volume. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, it's not super heavy on the stomach. Right. So depriving your body of food and fluids when you have a fever can actually weaken your defenses and make it harder to recover. So here are some key points from the medical experts. So fevers are part of the immune response. And I say that to everyone. Okay? So does Mario, yeah. Like if you have a fever, it's okay. But you know what? That comes from our parents too. Because, no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, as soon as my mom sees that that thermometer is red, like a slight fever. Yeah. So like he just had on a low train immediately right yeah, now. I'm yeah, like, yeah. mom, calm down. Yeah. Like it's not, it, it's actually a good thing. Yeah. You know? I say treat the patient, not the number. Yeah. So if obviously if a fever is making you or your kid feel really crummy, mm -hmm. you're not feeling well, you're down, you're on the couch, you're not really moving. Sometimes you can have so much fever that you have like a headache oh, and yeah, your body yeah. aches. So yes, for, you of know, course. of course, just go by all means, take the Tylenol yeah. Yeah, 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 or yeah. take the Motrin. Yeah, of course. Um, however, if you are, I don't know, 100.4, mm -hmm. okay, but you're running around, you're feeling great and you're like, oh yeah, I have a fever. Like I didn't even notice, like you don't have to yeah. take something for that. Like right. your body needs to elevate its core temperature to a certain temperature to be effective to fight a virus or fight any kind of infection. Right. Okay. Right. So... Sometimes if you're actually bringing down that fever, what you're actually doing is inhibiting you from doing that, right? Yeah. They're prolonging so, it maybe yeah. even. And, and some people might be confused and they're like, well, what about seizures with fever? Yes, absolutely. There is a certain age where children are more, you know, uh, more Prone. at risk yeah. to develop a fever. But it's not because of how high the fever is. It's actually the change in the actual temperature. So you can have... You can seize at a fever of 100.4 and you can seize at a fever of 104. Yeah. Okay. It's the change, not the actual level. So yes, at, and especially if you are prone, if you've already had a seizure from a fever, then yes, I would be that doctor to say, hey, you know, be on top of the fevers, treat them. Why? Because you've already seized. So if you've already seized, you're probably more at risk of seizing again. Yeah. So, and it's scary, right? Like no one wants to see a, see a seizure. Yeah. However, if your kid is running around and doing everything and you're running around and you have no idea that you have a fever, you don't have to give Tylenol a little trip. Right. Okay. Right, right, right. Especially if you're out of that age range. So fevers are part of your immune system. A fever is a sign that your body is trying to fight off an infection by raising its temperature. That increase in the metabolism burns more calories. So taking in nutrients becomes more important when you have a fever. So don't starve it. Guys. Yes. Do not starve a, fe uh, a cold or a fever. Staying hydrated is crucial as well. Fevers cause dehydration because of you have that increase in your metabolism. So you uh, have increased sweating, you have fluid loss, so you need to replace those fluids, right? Mm -hmm. So it's critical in helping your body combat the illness. Dehydration can also thicken mucus, make it harder to expel and expectorate things. So it's really important in staying hydrated, okay? And also when you hydrate, you you are also taking away the symptoms from actual dehydration. Right, right. You feel 10 times shittier oh. when you are dehydrated. Oh, yeah. Okay? Yeah. So not only are you trying to, like, hydrate for your body mm -hmm. to actually fight something off, but also you're going to feel a lot better. Trust right. me. So your body needs energy to fight illness. Whether you have a cold from a fever or, for, or if your body requires energy from food to fuel the immune response, you, you got to eat. So eating a balanced diet with fruits, veggies, whole grains, lean proteins provides the nutrients that your body will need. Don't force it, okay? So I get this a ton mm -hmm. in clinic. It's mm -hmm. like, oh, they're not eating anything. And then I'm like, what are they drinking? Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. they get so bothered. They're like, yeah, but how can you like not? Yeah. You know, it's been two to three days. And I'm like, it's okay. Like you offer it to them. They drink. They maybe have a cracker. They maybe have a fruit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, just watch closely. Right. So... Don't force it. Uh, it's common to lose your appetite when you're sick. It's just not what the body is prioritizing yeah. right now. Okay. Yeah. So you don't have to force yourself to eat if you don't feel like it. But make right. sure that you drink plenty of fluids like water, broths, and also electrolyte beverages. Yes. Okay. So the origins of Starva fever likely came from an outdated belief that fasting could help the body cool down during a fever. However, we know that proper nutrition supports the fever response and the immune's systems efforts 
So in summary, the advice should really be feed the cold, feed a fever. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Make sure to eat nutritious foods and stay hydrated, whether you have a stuffy nose or if you have an elevated temp. Your body needs the energy for those fluids to effectively fight off the illness. So let's put the old wife, old blah, 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 blah. Blah, blah. Yeah. <laughs> let's put this old wife's tail to rest once and for all. Yeah. And then when your loved one is under the weather, proper mm. nourishment you. and hydration yeah. will help you get back on your feet faster. Yes. Yes. Let's not starve. Yes. Forget the diet. Forget all the things. If you're hungry while you have a cold or any sort of illness at that moment, yeah. That's a good thing. Feed yourself. And it is a good thing. Yeah. yeah. Don't forget to help out your body. It's yeah. fueling your body to do its thing. You know? Exactly. So that was our second installment for this series of debunking yes. medical myths. I love debunking these myths. Yeah. We yeah. hear it all the time. And now here we are letting you know a little bit of more information. Yep. 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 So if you guys have any myths that you would like for us to debunk or explore, because maybe it's actual fact. Maybe that myth has some science behind it. In this case today, we none of them did. Yeah. Um, but sometimes they do. They're there for a reason. So if you guys think of any that you try or you feel that they are actually factual, let us know. I'll yeah. look into it and we'll feature it in one of these installments. I think it would be really funny to have everyone kind of comment yeah. on their parents' reactions. Like if your parents are one of those parents that like said any of these things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so just comment on what your parents say. I just think it's Yeah, funny. yeah. If they about. are like our parents that believed if not all, some I, I of could these. I read research articles to my mom and she they won't. And she'll just be like, I don't know about that. Yeah, same, same, same. <laughs> I get it. It's it's like, you know, just talking know to a wall. That. Yeah, it's talking to a wall. But anyway, so if you guys have anything like that, let us know. Funnymedicine305 at gmail.com or comment it in any of our social media outlets, which we're everywhere in. Check out our Patreon, patreon.com forward slash funnymedicinepodcast. We have a lot, a lot of good episodes there. Full episodes that come out every Friday. And you'd also be helping to support the show. Please. So uh, thank you guys for tuning in and we'll see you on the next one. See you on the next one. Bye. Like, comment, review us on all streaming platforms, Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music, etc. Check us out on Instagram and TikTok at Funny Medicine Podcast. Our Gmail is funnymedicine305 at gmail.com. And remember, we are not diagnosing you. Definitely not. Just funny stuff. See you later, guys. <laughs>